Hey y'all, Mr. Gibson here, and today we're going to be looking at how to use string operations in Python. As you can see, I've created a new notebook file here, um, created a couple of variables to get things started. So I've created the variable first name using our snake case, so underscore between the first two words there. And I've assigned that the string object Abraham, and then I've created another variable last name and assigned that the string object Lincoln, and then a third variable named space, which contains uh, the empty string. Well, actually, it's not empty. It contains a single space. You can tell by uh, the space between the two quotes. And we're going to be using these three strings here today um, to practice some of our string operations and slicing and methods to get a feel for how we can use strings in Python. Since strings are going to be what contain all of our plain text and cipher text, we're going to use them quite a bit. So let's go ahead and run this cell. I'm going to press Shift Enter to run and create a new empty cell underneath it. And it should load all of those into memory. One thing to notice is that none of those were actually printed out to the screen. There were no calculations done. So unlike when we do operations with numbers uh, in Python, when you assign values to a variable, none of that gets printed to the screen. So if I wanted to print some output, I would need to use a print function. So let's go ahead and create a new variable called full name. And we'll create this variable by concatenating the three strings that we just created in the cell above. And we'll do that by doing first name and then the plus symbol, which is the concatenation symbol for strings, space, and then the plus symbol, and then last name. And when we run that cell, again, we won't see anything created or printed to the screen. The cell just runs without any kind of fanfare. It just does its thing. But if you wanted to see what that string was, that's where our print function comes in. So we can say print full name. And we'll see that a new string was created that's the combination or the concatenation of those first three strings that we started with. We could now work with that full name string and do a couple of different things. We could look at that name written all in uppercase if you want to use the dot upper method. You can see methods in Python and our notebook environment are going to be highlighted in blue. Uh, functions will be highlighted in green. Strings are kind of this reddish brown color. Operators are purple. So everything kind of gets a little color code to help you keep track of what's a special word uh, in Python. So when I run this print command, we should see the exact same string as before, but with all of the characters uppercase. And there we go. We saw quite a bit of different methods that strings can use. So every string object has access to these methods that can modify the way that things get printed. So we could make everything lowercase using the lower method. We could use the length function, which is not a method, um, but we can figure out how long this name is, including the space. So the space gets counted in there. So if we were to say uh, assign to the variable length, the length of the full name, and then let's print out that length. We can see that there's 15 characters in the string full name. And at this point, we've created quite a bit of variables. We had the first three strings that we started with. We created the full name. And now we just created uh, the variable length, which is holding a number. So if you ever get kind of lost in how many variables and which ones they are and what they're holding, there's a nice command in Python that you can use, whos, uh, who's. And when you run that, it'll show you all the variables that are currently stored into memory and what type they are. So you can see these first three are strings, this is an integer, and then it shows you what's currently stored to those variables. It's a nice way if you're kind of bug checking some code that isn't working the way that you thought it should, uh, just run the who's command and see what's currently in memory. Um, if you watched the last video, we, you saw the bit about restarting the kernel. This is what restarting the, ker the kernel will flush out. It'll basically erase all of these variables that are currently stored and reset them which is a really common way to avoid some bugs from popping up. So now we've got these variables in our memory. Let's, let's continue to work with our strings. Let's take that full name string and let's slice out some characters. So maybe I only want the first three letters. Well, we can do that by printing out full name. We use the square brackets. You'll notice that anytime you open up parentheses or brackets in the Jupyter Notebook, 
It'll try and auto-complete that for you so you don't forget to close the parenthesis or bracket later. And now I'll put in some indices that I want to pull out or slice from the string full name. So if I said I wanted the first three characters, that means I want the characters that are found starting at index zero and up to but not including index uh, three. And when I run this, we should see the characters that are found at index zero, one, and two, which should be A, B, and R. There they are. And if I wanted to go through the full name, but only printing every other character starting at the first character, I could do colon, colon, two. Remember, string slicing can take up to three uh, indices to work with. So the one that would show up first is the starting index. And if you omit that, it will assume the start at index zero at the beginning. The second index that you can provide will tell it where to stop. And if you omit that, it will assume just go right on to the end. And the last index that you can provide uh, tells it how many to count by. So if you start at the beginning, count basically every two indices and, and kind of collect those and print those out. And that's not really a word, but we get the idea that it's pulled every other letter um, starting at the first one. String slicing is really powerful. We can use this to extract a lot of information from strings and just the pieces that we need. So it's definitely something you want to get comfortable using in this course. Uh, we could, of course, pull just uh, individual characters if we just give it a single number in those brackets. Um, so I could say first name zero plus last name zero, and that'll pull the uh, characters at index zero, so the first character, out of each of those strings and then concatenate them, essentially creating in this context the initials of the person. And don't forget, you can use negative indices kind of working your way from the back of the string. So if I take our full name and then reference index negative one, That'll pull the character that's in the last index and display that to the screen. A lot of things that we can do with strings, and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. So make sure that you read up on all of the different string functions and methods that are available to you in Python. And we'll start using more of these later on in the course. One last important method I want to make sure that we, we touch on today is the find method. This will be the kind of foundation on how we will start converting letters into numerical representations in our next couple lessons. So if we wanted to find a letter in a string, we could do that by taking the string name, so we'll do full name, and we'll end with dot find. If you think about, okay, well, where do I, what letter do I want to find? We're working with the name Abraham Lincoln. Let's find where that capital L is. So if I give it this capital L string, we call that a substring because we expect that it's contained in the larger string. When we run this, it'll tell us at which index in the full name string that we're going to find this substring. We happen to be just looking for a single character, but that substring could be as long as you want it to be. If we run that, it's telling us that the capital L is found at index 8, so the ninth character in that string. One thing to point out is that the find method is case sensitive. If you did lowercase l, it's not going to find that. It's going to find the one that's at index 13. And if it can't find something, say we ask for it to find the letter Q, it returns a negative one. So you're not going to get an error message. It's going to be happy to just keep on going uh, along its way. But it, you can know to look out for that negative one. If you were to use the index method, which works almost the exact same way, when it doesn't find the character, it throws an error for you. Some people like an error message to pop up to know that things went wrong. Other people like the negative one, so just things keep moving through. It's kind of a personal preference. They each have their pros and cons, so figure out what, which, which one works best for you. And that should do it for this lesson. Make sure you review all of the different string functions and methods, and we'll build on that and continue to learn more of them throughout the course. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.